I often reflect that if I'm ever threatened by other people's belief systems, like if I ever have a friend who say they don't believe in God or something like that, um, if I need to take offense to that, I, I, I personally believe that if I take offense to that, then I don't actually believe or know the things that I, you know, that the way that I create myself to be, because why would that offend me? Why would your belief systems invalidate mine or make me if I have to convince you to believe in something that I believe in as well, I don't think that's the, <laughs> that's the right way to go about it. You know, I don't need to do that. Everyone's path is their path and all oceans lead back to the same source. Welcome to the consciousness of the way. I am your humble servant and seafood, Taoist Master Sun Ching. And I have been looking forward to this very moment. I was very excited when uh, I received an, uh, a welcoming acceptance to come on the podcast today. I want to welcome to the podcast Sage from Praise the Sun, who's also a podcaster and has a platform for conscious creators, a conscious seeker, a um, developer of all things greater than the past or the present it's the now welcome to the podcast my dear friend thank you for having me indeed yeah so this is always welcome this conversation where you have um uh my students uh love to experience the the uh, visceral somatic sort of like response that takes place when i have these conversations the dancing of the energetic potential and all the things that come with it as um, everything is uh, the feeling as I've been sharing that and teaching that for many decades. Uh, if you're thinking you're not knowing, if you're knowing you're feeling and that is the now. So why don't you share a little bit about yourself leading up to this very moment? Yeah, I am. Um, I've been on this spiritual journey, I'd say since 2015. Um, and uh, it was right after I, um, I was still actually in the military at the time, but it's when I got back from my deployment and uh, I was dealing with some uh, most th most basic things that soldiers deal with is PTSD related issues, anxiety related issues, struggling to integrate back into society, stuff like that. And uh, I began to look back into researching understanding more about different um religions so i just kind of began to study um all of different religions again i was raised christian but um there are some aspects of christianity that at a young age were just a bit questionable for me just not even from the things that i read in the text but more so the things that i observed in the people who claim to practice this certain lifestyle and yet once they leave from upstairs which is where the main you know sanctum is where all the you know prayers and everything happens they come downstairs and they seem to become different people um so it's just it was very questionable to me um and uh i began to learn more about uh buddhism hinduism more even more about creation uh, christianity as well because you can't you, you, you can learn about one thing, but eventually you'll start to see how certain teachings kind of correlate and things connect in different religions. Um, and uh, I guess at the time I was really resonating with meditation and Buddhism um, and the idea of enlightenment really, I guess, appealed to me. And um, I just began to get into meditation and uh, the meditation initially we was a bit difficult for me i really couldn't sit and close my eyes and without any type of anxiety and ptsd arising and coming up and flaring up and uh, i just kept being persistent with it and i just kept going with it and uh eventually i had what what people online call a kundalini awakening and which were the energy that i was imagining in inside of my uh head um it was like a, a popping sensation and then i start to see this blue light every time i would meditate um and every time i would get into deep states of meditation it would actually give me a headache because the energy would get stuck in my head so it actually turned me off from meditation for quite some time because i 
uh, I guess I was really confused on what was happening because um, I, I guess things started to accelerate very quickly. Um, something that I was trying to use to just kind of manage stress began to start to have like, I wouldn't say supernatural, but less than normal kind of uh, experiences. So uh, I stopped for a while and then I kind of got back into it because I was starting to have bad anxiety again. and. I was just like, okay, well, let me at least research what's happening with me. And um, um, I read online that simply once you get back into the medita state, meditative state, just imagine um, the energy that's there to turn like a faucet and it will drain out of your head. And oddly enough, that worked. So um, so I was able to get back into meditation and, uh, and, and uh, really try to understand what this blue flame that I was seeing every time that I, was, I, I would meditate was. And um, at some point, <clears throat> at some point, I, I don't even remember why, but I began to, I guess, look more and, and learn more about ayahuasca and uh, understanding how that could help you with um, healing and PTSD and opening you up to more spiritual states and stuff like that. So I was like, OK, well, that sounds like a really intense thing to do. So make, let me make sure I you know, got proper shaman and stuff like that. And. Um, somehow that came into my life as well. So I guess, you know, it was meant to be type of thing. Um, and uh, I was able to have a, a very, a very, very powerful ayahuasca journey. Um, still to this day, that's still one of the most powerful ones that I've had. And I, I know I can't control the experiences, but I definitely uh, hope future sessions would be as that um, powerful. But uh, that definitely led me to awaken even deeper into uh, the spiritual self, open up and unlock deeper levels of awareness within inside of myself and uh, memories and connections and emotions of uh, just things that are just beyond this lifetime. And um, it answered a lot of things for me and it just continued to allow me to pursue understanding spirituality more and more. Um, but, um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I kind of lost my pacing, but, um, what else, uh, what else should I cover? <laughs> Cause that's kind of covers the basics of how I got into spirituality and where I am. Well, not where I am, but how I started. Right. Right. So you, you inferred that you're sort of resonating with sort of like Buddhist Hindu sort of practices um, that have sort of uh, taken you on the path of uh, um, what you consider a Kundalini experience. Right. And um, through that, have you been able to regulate or create some type of ecosystem that, that bears, uh, you know, fruit in relation to how how the energies are being processed and uh, transmuted um, in something that's more uh, fundamentally uh, obtainable for the seeker, right? So it's not, you referred to um, this blockage. Um, how is it now and what have you discovered from where you were um, leading to the blockage and then sort of, you know, not doing as much practice, sort of stepping away from meditation. Yeah, I ever since I, uh, I guess, like, oh, use my awareness to like imagine the um, the trapped energy to drain from my head. I never had that problem ever again. Mm. Um, and uh, I guess the the fruits of me. Uh, reaching these uh, levels of meditation, which I'm always I'm always reluctant to say because I don't really feel like I go into like very deep states. I've been into deep states before, but nothing nothing that I feel like I've what I've heard from other people. But it still works for me. Um, but uh, I feel that the the gates or doors, if you will, of intuition are very much wider open for me. And the older I get, and the more uh, the more I just simply allow those intuitive energies to flow through me without the the ego mind's uh, filters and perceptions and conditions and 
um, all those things allowed the, the more I just allow that information to flow through me, the more that I uh, observe that a lot of the time the information that I'm receiving is in fact uh, correct or um, at least guiding me in the direction that I need to be. Um, and uh, th I just remember this uh, this also came to mind in which that um during the times when I was uh, consistently meditating, I, uh, I had a really, really interesting experience. And this is just one of the many ones. Um, I guess it's the most significant one, but I was getting a MRI. And during this process of me getting the MRI, um, the blue awareness appeared in, in, in front of me. And with my eyes closed, I, the blue awareness appeared in the blue flame. And it said that you need to check on your friend Miles. He just got into a fight with his brother. And um, I was just really confused because that was one, that was oddly specific. But two, um, it made me really interested because this is something that's, uh, at least for the left brain, this is easily, this is something that you can easily verify. You know, if it's factually correct, you can just call the person or text the person and see what it was. <clears throat> so once I left the MRI, I did that. And um, I cannot remember if I texted him or called him, but he didn't confirm that, yeah, he just got into a fight with his brother. And I was just like, I was just, I, I didn't, I, I paused because I didn't know what to say. I was like, how did I know that one? And I'm like, are you, are you being honest with me? Because I was just like, I, I know like, why would he lie about that? But it's just, I was just like, why did why why did I know that? Why was that information relayed for me? What what was I supposed to do with that? But that was just one of the many intuitive experiences that I've had in which I the the gates were open and the information was passed to me and I acted on it and I was just like, okay, well maybe there's something there. Um but yeah, I have I mean other things, but uh back to you, son. Yeah, no, I mean, it's always what we call, what I call being in the game, as some quantum physicists would call it a holographic uh, experience. But let's just say we're in the game. As an OG in the game, we call that the glimpse. You get a taste, chase that dragon, the spiritual dragon. So you get that taste and you get a slither of a clear sense, and then you're like, whoa 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 hold up here what's going on this is not the average everyday run-of-the-mill experience i'm now perceiving things at a much heightened level that was not what i perceived wasn't available to me like as of yesterday and now today i'm experiencing something that is far more wide and open than i've ever experienced before now the the biggest thing for a seeker, for a Taoist seeker, is to to validate and identify a methodology, a method, a practices that can replicate repeatable experiences that you can then validate as a self-realization of that very practice. So now you get a taste, the spiritual dragon, you're chasing it. Now what did you discover um, from that uh, jump off point? Did you find yourself a method that could replicate this very experience or are you still seeking? Um, that's a really great question. Um, I, I wouldn't say that I found a method that can replicate this specifically because um, in, in the beginning, I wasn't even uh, seeking seeking like certain information like that like i wasn't exactly sure why that information came into my awareness because i wasn't directly looking for it i wasn't um sitting down meditating and and channeling looking for an answer or anything like that it just kind of came into my awareness so i wouldn't i wasn't even sure how to begin to maybe even replicate it and i guess at the time that wasn't even uh something that I was thinking about. I guess I was just kind of in a state of confusion for a while. Um, I still uh, do enter that state whenever I have meditation where the blue awareness is there and there are there is information, but it's not so much about other people. It's just 
more so thinks about myself and things that I could do better or maybe even um, the state of the world or stuff like that, um, things of that nature. Um, but I, I wouldn't say um, I, I've created a replicable uh, experience for myself in that way. Um, maybe a little bit when I do, uh, do self-channeling for myself where I just kind of put myself into a deep state of meditation um, and kind of allow uh, the energies or I, I call it connecting with universal mind. And once I allow myself to connect with that, I just kind of let the information and speaking to come through when I just record it and then I listen to it back later. It's not something that I do publicly or do for people. Um, it's just something that I kind of do for myself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it always starts from there. And so with that, you do that for yourself. You, you reference channeling. I mean, I think that's for, for a Taoist seeker, that's the highest level of ascension. And we take nine stages to acquire that. It starts with the physical body, the energetic body, the spiritual body. Then it, it, it enters the sun body, the earth body, the moon body. And then finally, the being, sorry, the oneness, the ultimate, and then being as the highest point of ascension, which is direct source information. And you access it at will more spiritually, uh, uh, language would be acquired in this day and age, the Akashic records, the holes of a mente, things of this nature. Uh, within a Taoist practice, we call it the diamond perfection manifest. Everything is a facet of that consciousness, spiritual consciousness. So you channel, and uh, would you say you're channeling yourself? Uh, we go within sort of monologues and dialogues. Um, you know, a monologue is the highest point of accessing the mother. Between the breath in and the breath out is what we call the bellows, which is the instant contraction and expansion of all things happening at once. You are all things and nothing at the same time. And so within that center point, the center of all things is the Wu Ji, the stillness, which reveals the mother, the mother of all things, the Tao, perfection. And you know, that in of itself attunes with you, that little chill you got up your spine, that is that realization. That is that, oh, oh, hang on a second, whoa. And so you, and people are like, well, how the hell do you even know this? That's going on visually. Well, I see it and then I feel it. So that's part of a clear sense of development that I train people in to be able to see the energetic potential and the properties, because it's very important that you know what you're you're playing with. It's like if you're in the in your if you're in a dark room and someone hands you a pile of doo doo, <laughs> and you don't know what it is, you could think it's clay or you, or it's dog shit. I mean, it, you 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 need to be able to see it, and right. so. You refer to uh, Jesus Christ. You refer to Christianity. Now, there's uh, elements of that within a, a yogic path of uh, like Yoga Linda, sort of Christ consciousness, or are we speaking about uh, Jesus Christ? Are we speaking about God? Or perhaps maybe you've moved to another a level of awareness and you're changing the whole playing field for yourself and you're, you're resonating with uh, Buddha, which uh, basically... Buddhism in of itself means that they don't believe in God, which is a really weird one. Um, where are you at, my dear friend? I would say that I, um, and I, I reflect on this often because um, there aren't any uh, particular religious practices that I have. There are just things that I do for spiritual wellness within myself, such as um, diet, exercising, and um, um, just things of that nature. But if I had to say it's anything, it would probably be a uh, oneness. And that's just kind of more resonating with um, uh, principles from the law of one. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I believe you probably have heard of the law of one. Is that um, there's a reference of that uh, uh, something in relation to Ra, the law of one, perhaps? You know, there's this uh, sort of uh, diluted uh, sort of hot potato back and forth between comedic and hermetic principles that are two of the same. 
that right. could be reference to something or nothing, um, it needs to be repeatable and validated by the seeker in the self-realization. But generally speaking, from a Taoist, when someone uses um, laws of anything, it becomes problematic and we sort of, we about face them and go in the opposite direction. Right. I would say that it's a, a representation of a state from a Taoist perspective, but I have heard people refer to this Ra or law of one. What uh, is that like um, as beloved, as above, so below, sort of like a hermetic sort of idea of reality, like micro to macro? Uh, yeah, essentially. Um, I'm not uh, someone who is uh, very... Um, uh, like a master of the material or anything or um, and still reluctant to even say that I follow anything is just closely it's the it's what I follow the closest which is just um, um, everything is everything and everyone is a part of the source energy field which is the one energy field that contains everything it contains all of experiences um, and essentially everything is of consciousness it's of uh, that same source field so that's pretty much what it is um, that I kind of live by and I try to abide by. And it helps me to not um, interact with people in a way that's very egoic and um, that creates a lot of separation between me and other people. I just try to see them as an extension of the uh, creator, the God or universal source or whatever thing that people like to use. Um, so it's just something that's the closest to related to or what I uh, try to practice for myself. And I, I'm i comfortable there because I don't like to uh, partake in any particular um, set of belief systems because um, uh, you usually have to um, abide by those things to say that you are a Christian or a Buddhist or this and that. You need to follow those principles because those are important ways to create your reality and interact with your uh, peers and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I, I can't really say that I'm a Christian because I haven't completely read the Bible. I don't know the material and, and things like that. So it's, you know, I wear a cross around my neck because uh, this is something that my mother gave me. And although I do have deep cellular memory and connections towards uh, uh, the being people called Jesus Christ, um, I still wouldn't exactly say that I'm a Christian or anything of that because I have respect for the people who say that they do those things and I let the, those people, uh, you know, do those things. But um, I like to find my way of living from within and learn from different masters and teachers to create the reality that most beneficial for myself and people around me. Amen to that, brother. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, it sounds to me like you perhaps might be leaning a little bit towards a Gnostic path of realization. A Gnosticism is more self-evident, self-realized, which would be in line with the Taoist sort of um, understanding of the nature of reality, which is you are the direct source. The monologue is the evidence based of the now. And um, I, I really love the way that you, you presented that. That has a, an, a really powerful resonance. And, you know, um, people do get caught up in this sort of the semantics of uh, my team is this and your team is that. And I always remind people, if you dismiss, dismiss someone's belief system, you dismiss your own. And there's a million ways up the mountain. There is no right or wrong way um, to be realized. You know, Wu Wei, as we speak on it as a Taoist, is called effortless action, effortless effort. It's a representation of the highest um, point of consciousness and element that is represented in water form, which creates this ability that we remind people that all the rivers return to the ocean. Water will go where no man can go. And when you realize that you are not of this body, what can harm you? Nothing. Nothing. Exactly. <laughs> Essentially was a lot of the realizations that I came through in my spiritual journey and development. So I, yeah, I, I concur with that ex exactly. I, I often reflect that if I'm ever threatened by other people's belief systems, like if I ever have a friend who say they don't believe in God or something like that, 
Um, if I need to take offense to that, I, I, I personally believe that if I take offense to that, then I don't actually believe or know the things that I, you know, that the way that I create myself to be, because why would that offend me? Why would your belief systems invalidate mine or make me, if I have to convince you to believe in something that I believe in as well, I don't think that's the, <laughs> that's the right way to go about it. You know, I don't need to do that. Everyone's path is their path and all oceans lead back to the same source yeah i mean that's it i mean I, I remember telling one of my dear friends decades ago that you know um I, i'm an ordained Taoist priest and he's 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 hebrew he's a, a jewish and the first response was just a like a, a sub an unconscious response there's only one god okay oh relax man you know take a breather now you know i mean it's all good in the hood right up in here but you know he he had this it's like a tourette's response to yeah. you know um what he was thinking what he was processing in his unconscious that he really had in his mind was this there's only one god and um what you tend to find in this selfless journey of realization to be in service of others is to be in service of yourself. And so, you know, the truth is you are me, I am you. What is there to fear? You got to fear yourself. And so that, that sort of like becomes problematic when you start wrapping yourself in uh, processes and rituals of protection to make sure that you are not permeated by the possibility of, of some ominous low frequency low watt energy which again is for the user i mean Taoist magic is predicated on duality it's predicated on your belief system and if you operate in duality Taoist magic is all so powerful and so what does that mean it means that you unravel the magic and it just works on whatever your deficiencies are so if you are in a state of fear, anxiety, anger, you know, complete stress, which is 99% of human beings, the human condition, the understanding of what that really means is just a simulation of your experience, which if you are a micro of a macro, this is a turbulence in your universe. The fluidity is not, the earth and the moon and the sun are not operating in flow and to create that flow you must identify that the emotions don't control you you control your emotions oh hang on a second and so what i find really interesting through your own admission and and um if you don't mind i did a little aura dipping but please tell me if you want me to stop but i noticed that you're extremely sensitive to energy and that's one of the channels that you are accessing now your emotional content revealing of that is a uh, part of your own admission through your own journey, PTSD, other things of that nature. Unraveling that emotional content reveals this incredible jewel because within an energetic uh, um, fundamental ecosystem from a Taoist alchemy perspective, the lung channel is the gateway to your energetic sensitivity. And so that opens the, you know, the self receptors that are layered on the skin within the dermal layer, within the flesh. This is how we're able to use this physical flesh as a tuning fork. And so that energetic potential is right there. And so, you know, that reveals itself in your aura. And, you know, it's like, whoa, hang on a second. Ooh. I'm kind of there, but I'm not. Uh, yeah, I think that's enough. We've had enough conversation about that. It, it it does take you back a little bit because you're not used to these type of like uh, processes. But the truth is, when people want to believe that you know that that you are not me and I am not you, you can tell yourself what you want to hear. But the truth is, as you refer to it, the Ra law of one is the truth. The delusion is that you attempt to separate yourself. Now, the energetic potential will be revealed to you. It'll be self-realized in the experience, the somatic experience. 
from the sound that is in audible or audible evokes the visceral kinesthetic response that you have through your neurological makeup, you will perceive that. And the more you cultivate your energetic practices, you will become the maestro of your 50 trillion cells. And that's what we do. I, we do it better than anybody, baby. Taoists <laughs> are badass and A1 second to none when it comes to internal alchemy. And that's what I love doing. That's that's my bag. So, uh, you know, I've been teaching people this for over 30 years. And when you get a harness of that stuff, all bets are off. To be able to separate electromagnetic potential, merge them together, the properties of, uh, you know, Kanan Li, which is more, not, more commonly known as fire and water, and you merge that magnetic fluidity, which is the crystalline purity of perfection within the alchemical processes. So we use these metal elements, gold, platinum, silver, all these are constructed within you. And when you merge them all, all bets are off, magical stuff starts taking place. Supernatural stuff starts taking place. And um, I can tell from your lineup within your podcast that you've had some interesting characters on there that intrigue you from everything from astral projection to, uh, you know, energetic healing and spiritual awakening, that these are the types of things that you clearly are open to. Would you agree? Yeah, uh, definitely. I, um, I just love hearing about people's experiences and um, their unique individual stories is what life is all about. So, yeah, I definitely uh, love to talk about those different topics within spirituality. It, it really doesn't matter what their beliefs are, what their background is. I don't I guess I'm one of the, the neutral players in that, you know, I could talk to whoever, you know, whoever has a different background than me and com be completely fine, you know, and I, I do feel like that is a bit of a problem for some people, you know, if uh, uh, they they can't interact with people who have different belief systems in them. And I mean, I guess we get to see that on a grand stage of uh, political politicalism with um, Democrats and Republicans and stuff like that. We get to see, oh, I can't talk to you, you're Republican and this and that. And it's just... <clears throat> it's, it's, I can't be like that. It seems like an exhausting state of mind to be in, to have such barriers and restrictions and who you can interact with and who you can't because of the things that they believe in or this and that. You know, I love to talk to everybody. And I feel that in order for us to grow as a planet, we need to see the commonalities within us in order for us to progress. Because we, we put our differences on the grand stage all the time. We, we put that, I mean, the news do that all the time. We talk about all the negative things, but that's the exact reason why we're so in a state of disassociation and and franticness against each other. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, you just, uh, it's like identity politics, um, you know. Again, we refer to that, in a, as I shared with you before, when you believe you are the reflection in the mirror that's looking back at you, you are limited. The reflection, the flesh and blood, the humanist, is the distraction from a Taoist seeker perspective. That realization that this present moment is all things. Right. This is where things happen. This is where the healing takes place now. That means it has no title, place, person, or thing. And with that, magic takes place, you know physical healings. I'm used to physical healings. I've been witnessing that for over 30 years. First time I saw one was gangrious flesh turned back to pink in color in 40 minutes from a foot that needed to be amputated to bang, we're back in the game. Wow. And you know, I see that on a daily basis and it's a resonance. So for all the seekers out there, everything starts with a, a light to wave to matter to particle realization at a subatomic level that your attention intention transmutes the perfection cut from the cloth, creating the very 3D reality that has variables and it has its own frequency. So yeah. everything is energy. Energy has vibration. Vibration has a frequency. The frequency, once met with a resonance, will be yours. So if you put that out there, 
it will go equal to or greater than within this field of perfection, more commonly known from a quantum physicist perspective as the zero point, which we refer to as the Wu Ji, the stillness, the center point of all things. Uh, from a Rosicrucian perspective, it's the heart center, which is the center of all things. Um, that can be taken or left uh, as sort of problematic. Um, I think there's a little confusion there when they get that to that point. But hey, listen, if you show, I'm a Pepsi challenge guy from the 80s, right? Show me. <laughs> uh, show me and I will be wowed by the wonderment of that realization. It's like, let's do this. And it, and it needs to be palpable. It needs to be repeatable. It needs to be now. And so the center point is... Um, really the answer to all things and we all come to it in our own ways across all different platforms once you are as uh, you know ascertain that that's it and you you delve deep into it it will all be revealed the potential will be be revealed now you you've have you just sort of uh, pursued astral projection or other high levels of consciousness states have you pursued um, cultivating that yourself um, I have not pursued um, astral projection. I, it's definitely something that I'm interested in, but um, as I've, as I, I guess, as I've grown and learned and matured as a person, I've really understood, under, uh, bec come to understand that it, um, to get good at something, you, you need to be really consistent and diligent and like you can't just try it for a day or two or a week and say, oh, this doesn't work for me. And I mean, I feel like that's kind of the average person's approach to things that kind of look for short term results. But after growing and understanding that you need to be really consistent with something to get results like that, um, I, I just haven't had the time to dedicate towards doing something like astral projection. Um, it's definitely something that I'm interested in. What I have been... Um, I guess experienced in for a long time is the channeling aspect that that is something that I feel like that is something that just came natural to me um and I do feel like it has some family lineage type aspect to it because um I have a uh, a family of people who used to give prophecies and stuff like that um my mother was a prophet for our church and um, they they have a name for that uh, in Yoruba. It's called Woli or something like that. Woli. So it's um, it's a person who gives like prophecies for the church. And one of her prophecies, once she went into a trance state, they go into these trance state. I forgot what it's called in Yoruba, but they go into this trance state where they just kind of kind of repeating things over and over. Their eyes are closed and they're just repeating something. And she said that one of the churches would catch fire. Um, and one of the churches did catch fire um, shortly thereafter that. And um, that's just one of the uh, the many prophecies that she's give, she gave. And uh, that kind of was like a, a, a family lineage thing. We had other family members who, who did those type of those prophecy and things. So, um, uh, you know, I, I didn't learn about this until after I, have, I had my own experiences where I was... Um, uh, you know, the one with my friend Miles and, um, and this isn't a really a prophecy thing, but this is just kind of like, once again, things that are just kind of coming into my life naturally unfolding. Um, I, uh, used to do hypnotherapy for people. I used to do past life regressions for them. And one of my clients, um, I was at her house doing a session for her and, um, there was this overwhelming presence in the room that, um, I just couldn't ignore. Uh, and, um, you know, like I, I would agree that I am very sensitive to energies and um, uh, I just couldn't ignore that. And I just was like, OK, well, whoever you are, please wait until she's out of trance because I, I can't do these two things at once. So my client came out of trance. I said, OK, there's someone here who wants to talk to you. I closed my eyes and I just started speaking whatever the words were coming uh, from this being to the client. And um and I guess I make I figured out that it was her mother, and she said um, that I'm you know I'm so sorry, and that um, I I hope that you can forgive me, and we hope that you can like let go of anything that you're holding in your heart, and not to take life so seriously. And that was like a really that 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 line don't take life so seriously is something that I've heard from multiple people on the other side, just 
don't take life so seriously don't take life so seriously and um and uh she said that he's here with me and um then it was just like a incredible amount of energy was just kind of pushed into my back and it was like through my back through my heart and it's coming through her and it was overwhelming it made me cry so i'm sitting here holding my client and we're both crying and she i'm just saying i love you so so much and that's what her mother was saying i love you so so much and i guess i needed to experience how much energy was coming through me in that moment so she could understand how much her mother loved her um and that was probably the last time that i've done any type of mediumship stuff because i was not um prepared Ready? for any of that no i was little was so a little just, little 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 freaky yeah a little scary for you, you know? yeah I, I i wasn't ready for all of that and uh i just said uh, you know what let me just go back to working on myself i'm just gonna put this to the side because this is just i you know it, the the gates are open and i'm happy that my client had a great session and she had a you know a great opportunity to talk to the mother and stuff but it was just it was just a lot for me so that was just uh, a really interesting experience back then um and then um uh i just continued to to work on my meditation and, and continue to get back into meditation and um and uh one experience that i had um with meditation that i still i will never forget this for as long as i live because it was probably one of the most prof profound meditations I've ever had in my entire life. I just, I just kind of was like, you know what, I'm going to sit here in my living room and I'm just going to go as deep as I can. Um, and I, I don't know how long I was meditating for, but, um, I, uh, during this experience, I began to like really observe how, um, how much of the monkey mind is just it's just involuntary and just going and it's just saying things and it's just repeating information and data processing and you know and i got into a really deep state of meditation where i became uncomfortable because my mind wanted to escape and get up but i was unrelenting i was just like no this is i just kind of treated like this is what we're going to be for eternity this is what's happening this is what we're doing i'm not moving um, and the mind became just rampant. It was just regurgitating just random stuff. It was speaking in different languages. And I'm just like, what is happening in my mind? And then it's almost like after a certain point, it just became silent. And then I kind of, my consciousness shifted. And I, it's just so hard to describe because um, to this day, I've never been able to get back into that state. But it almost felt like I went into a different reality or something like that it was just it was just like it felt like a, a flower was opening inside of me that's what it felt like it was just like i like hit this threshold that the mind just couldn't stand anymore and the mind just gave up and then after it gave up it was like this flowering in my heart that opened up and it was just like this overwhelming sense of peace and tranquility and just stillness with inside of me it just felt like i I completely left this reality. I was like, and I was just, I was somewhere else for just like five seconds. I was just somewhere else for just, I don't even think it was five seconds. It just, it was just, just peace and tranquility. And it just, it was just so beautiful. And I came out of that state and I was crying and I was like, what was that? Because it was just the most peaceful state of existence and tranquility and just perfect stillness that I could ever imagine. It's just, I, it was beyond my imagination. It was just, perfect stillness just perfect just no just silence and just tranquility and peace and it was just one of the most beautiful moments i've ever experienced in my life and i still to this day couldn't get back to that point but it was just like that was amazing you know so yeah i mean uh, so the fear and apprehension that you have which is quite evident um you feel like that's limiting your experience? Um, I wouldn't say anymore. I don't. I don't. Um, I don't think I have any fear towards uh, anything regarding spirituality anymore. Um, you know, I uh, I've kind of worked through a lot of those things really, really diligently. Uh, fear is something that I take really seriously because I understand that it's a uh, it's a contractional state of mind. 
it's a contractional and, 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 and restricting state of mind. So I really work through my fears uh, very, very diligently and, and hard because I, I, I understand how limiting they can be for a, 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 a subdevelopment standpoint. So, um, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm like that anymore. I've mm -hmm. grown a lot. I've experienced a lot of things. I've done many more spiritual ceremonies, many more meditations and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I'm fearful anymore. Mm. Interesting. It's um, yeah, you know what you know, you don't know what you don't know. Right. So that's kind of like part of the conscious and unconscious processes. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you have that energetic profile and, you know, you, you know, just as you were speaking, you can notice the profile difference in some of the energetics, but moreover, you're, you're, you know, using the Lao Gong points and we call them Lao Gong points. It's a, the most, um, um, easiest entry point feet and hands and face uh, they have a highest layered level of landmine neuro um, activity so these are sort of uh, baselines of where people first experience this type of energetic potential initially until they start to harness their their the 50 trillion cells to their own sort of pulsating um sort of like a cycle and a pace that will will be uh a complementary to, you know, the hands and feet and face, and it all becomes just this overwhelming, visceral, you know, head to toe tuning fork experience, which is kind of like, you know, okay, when I say that, you f you feel what I'm talking about. It's like it's real, it's tangible, it's energetic. Right. It's kind of like when you said you were talking about that channeling, and that was an interesting energy that you brought through, yet. The potential is, you know, instantaneous. It's like accessing it. You know, I access all energies at will. Anything in the past, present, or the future, I can access. And so, you know, that is quite present now. You know, as we speak, we're experiencing that visceral experience, and that that's where you see the energetic potential as a contraction. And when I say that to you, there's definitely an uncomfortable moment of silence that comes from, hey, you know, oh, yeah, I want it to be all uppity up, but it's an apprehension. It's understandable, my friend, for your own admission. Even though you're working on it, you're this close. As we po point out within Taoism, you're at the lowest, you're at lowest is your highest. And so you, all, all the things that you potentially want to put on pause are still being cultivated and created regardless of your conscious dismissal so that potential is is being evoked does that make sense yeah i i would agree that apprehensive is probably um something that um uh, that's I, before you even said the word i was thinking um I think apprehensive is probably what I'm thinking of because I am still apprehensive with certain things um, regarding the things that I've been through spiritually and and a lot of the memories that I have and um, stuff like that. Like, I guess it's difficult to talk about and um, and I'm sure this is just my own, you know, thing because in the end, everyone has experiences that I can't tell you whether it happened or not, even within your own lifetime. I can't tell you something that you experienced in your life in your childhood didn't happen just because I wasn't there. Um, but for me, I mean, I've I have really strong memories of of um, being like a martial artist or something like that and doing these meditations on top of these mountains where I literally it was literally life or death. Like I literally had to figure out how to get my chi to sustain my my physical body and if i didn't i was going to die you know and we did these things and we did them like day in day out like i'm doing breathing exercises using the heat from my whatever energy that i'm pulling into to to sustain myself and i remember doing these things i remember being uh, a monk with uh the little uh the the way that they did their hair i can't remember you know i remember 
being this type of person. I remember being these type of alchemists. I remember expressing the, the knowledge and wisdom that I, I had and, and it was sharing with people. And I was just like, the way that we're doing things is completely wrong and teaching people different things and then being executed by the church because I'm going against whatever, you know, uh, agenda that they have, you know, and I, I guess I have so much apprehension because I've, I've, I remember these things happening multiple times, being killed for being outspoken, being shunned for being outspoken and sharing knowledge and information. And, uh, you know, it's just difficult things to talk about because we still haven't reached that part of society as a, as a mass scale to even accept that past lives are even a thing, even though we're more open to it now. You know, it's still something that I guess I have a bit of reluctance to talk about because I do, but I do like the the method of uh, can you replicate it? I, I I agree with that wholeheartedly. Can you replicate certain things if you have these experiences? Can you replicate them again? Can you teach other people to do them? Um, that's uh, one of the African principles. I forgot which tribe it was, but it was one of the tribes that use uh, iboga to uh, connect with the spiritual realms. It was like. We don't believe in things that we can't teach other people to experience. So, you know, they had these rite of passages where they would do iboga to connect with the different uh, spiritual planes of existence. So, like, you don't have to believe it. You know that it's real. You know that it, it's an actual thing. It's, an, it's a verifiable experience. You know, I experience it. You experience it. They experience it. If we all can collectively experience it, then there is no subjective reality. It's just objective. It's what it is. So... I understand that a, a lot, and I guess um, there are some things that I'm still working on not being so apprehensive about and being not so restrictive about, but it um, seems like uh, everything happens for a reason. I mean, I'm here on the show. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 a, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful realization that you get into a space and um, your journey has been so expansive up until this point, and and acknowledging and being you know accountable is part of the healing is that realization that you know this is noise this is real to me and the contracting and expansion of this physical body gives me the very self-evidence of knowing the truth what is the truth the truth anyone that gives you an absolute truth uh you should probably about face and run in the other <laughs> yeah. Whereas it's your truth, not my truth, not Sage's truth, your truth, and your truth is your experience. Your truth is the feeling. Your truth is the knowing that what we speak on is having this visceral experience. That's why the tuning fork, the physical body, is so important to register and validate what it is that you're experiencing. That's what it's used for. That's the purpose of it, is another micro of the macro. And, you know, you will be harmonious or you will be um, shit out of luck, really. <laughs> yeah. Because when you're not in tune, it will be evident by your experience. Right. It will be evident by what you're uh, gravitating to. People always ask me, well, how is your day, Jifu? How are you? And I'm... My answer is always the same. It's good to be me because I know what I know and I don't know what I don't know. And if you always realize that the student is the teacher, the teacher is the student, you'll forever be in a place of expansion and contracting and expanding and contracting and expanding. And we always remind you within Taoism, man is not like that. Man will get exhausted. When you associate yourself with this physical flesh, you will be limited. You refer to the chi, we talk about it as jing, as the life force that you are born into this uh, world with, as your soul enters into this physical body in conception to a cycle of what we call within Taoism, the nine stages of creation. So it's very interesting. The highest number within Taoism is nine. How many months does it take to create human life? Oh, nine. 
And where does that stop, the center point? There's still no scientific validation as to how life is created. They do not have a fundamental construct or an affirmed, validated scientific formula to how life enters the physical body. Life in of itself is part of perfection. All of a sudden, the heart starts beating. How did that happen? Well, we don't know. Oh, yes, it's the center point of all things. That's the Wu Ji, the stillness, the mother. And when you enter that, the cycle of creation is self-evident in the creation of life, which is the cycle of the cosmos. For a Taoist, we look at the Taoist cosmos is conception, creation in its complete evolution and realization that what you see before you is this dualistic pulsating of this contracting and expanding of the bellows that we speak of. And that center point is where you access change. You access an expansion of that and your ability to alter this limited 3D. So, you, are, you know, you cannot observe we understand that we're all four di fourth dimensional beings because you can't absorb a 3d if you're not in the fourth d that means you're you're one foot away from the fifth d or however you want to call it i mean this whole d d d whatever you want to <laughs> call it D dimensional shifts most people tend to gravitate to they want to understand whatever it is it's it, and i yeah. use that dimensional um model from a physicist's perspective because it, it makes sense to a lot of people that are stuck in the mental. They're stuck in the mind, yeah. but not from uh, a micro or macro, but more an intellect, more a separation. You know, the center point is here. Intuitive intellect. Here is the center point. This is where the stillness lies. And fu funnily enough, that's where your pituitary gland is. Oh, the receiver of all things, the transmitter of all things. And, you know, from a Taoist perspective, it's the Ryu, which is the crystalline receptor that evokes what we call the sacred infinite flower. And that reveals the 81 chambers of the upper Dantian, which is the energy elixir field, the energy field that is part of the activation of what we call Nidan, which is internal alchemy that that boasts and creates a robust Nigong, which is internal power. And so all these types of things become more and more self-evident as you continue to cultivate. And I love the way you reference meditation because that's a good baseline to get to. And I think that meditation in of itself is sort of um, dismissed as some sort of like a transient thing, but that's a baseline or a fundamental construct that you should always start with when you're seeking to be the now. Mm -hmm. The now. Right, right, yeah. that present moment. It's all right. things. The Ra, as Ra would say, the, the law of one. Right. Right, right. That's definitely part of my meditation, meditational practices, um, especially when I'm doing channeling for myself. I do my best to just get into the most uh, present state that I can, to just be as present as I can. And um, um, I would say that um, I enjoy that channeled state because um, it's one where the mind can relax and I can just let whatever energies that needs to come out in that present moment to come out. Um, I know I've had a lot of different channelers on my podcast and they all kind of have their own individual, I guess, entity or being that they connect to and stuff like that. And I guess I am a different in that aspect as I don't really connect towards any type of individual or being more so, uh, something that's called universal mind and, Every time I connect with it, it's very adamant that it has no identity because identity is a third dimensional concept. And whenever I connect with it, it's just immediately this one has no name. And then we begin to 
I just begin to speak into the microphone and, and I just listen to whatever I say when I'm done. So, um, I, f I find it really powerful. The, the energetic um, properties are far more yin. So I've been channeling for about 32 years. I started on my journey. I channeled my teacher to this day that I'm, I'm in direct communication with on a second by second basis, Latsu. And I have 171 different teachers that I channel at will. They're all facets of the diamond we call perfection. And that's what I talk about when I talk about the dialogue that I have with these facets of consciousness that is the spiritual consciousness, which is the, the diamond, which is the monologue, the Tao. And so you get these dialogues. Now, when I started, it's a very, very palpable, and it, it's to, to this day it is. If I if I sit in it long enough, and I, you know, I'm I'm basically most things that come out of my mouth would say would most likely come from Latsu. It's not I'm not a genius. I have nothing to offer, but <laughs> that information just comes out. Now, when I have a direct communication where I'm doing a session and I record it for 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 audience, um, it becomes a very dense heat. It's like a light beam that draws down within my physical flesh and it, and it has an emission and emits a, a heat and a frequency where you can get a stick and put a marshmallow on it and cook it as you stand around the auric transmission that comes from Latsu. It's a very visceral, physical now moment that you are, there is no twisting any of that stuff you're like holy crap this is incredibly visceral it's kinesthetic right. and so i can see the what's really different with you is this yin property where it's like a chill it's like this sort of chill element that comes through you and it's uh it's strange um not strange in a bad way but it's like not not common like i i have yin elements and yin and yang create the oneness, right? And that's really the polarizing effects of duality as you merge the two when you realize all is one, one is all. That's that very moment. It's the now where all things are nothing at the same time. And that chill is a, a, a very, you know, very visceral energetic, um, you know, potential that, that is on a physicality level that you seem to have a, a lot more into. Now, I tap into what we call yin eyes. That's how I see entities with my eyes up and I see auras, all that kind of stuff as part of the clear sense. Um, have you explored the energetic potential of, of, as you would say, other energies? Now, that energy that you channeled for your client, that was a yang energy. Holy shit, that was a yang energy. <laughs> and I could feel that. And uh, I was going to go to the next stage of let's go and experience it. And uh, I noticed your apprehension. So we were like, hey, we're good. We'll just we'll sit at this point of experiencing, sort of experiencing what happens now. Experiencing but, what? Well, well, just experiencing that frequency, that resonance. See, you know, a lot of people get really a little, it's too much. Like right now, it's like... Uh, you know, you're experiencing it. You're 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 dilating. You're you're expanding. You're not contracting. It's like a little heat's coming in. It's changing. But you know, sometimes when I share that, people are like, oh, 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 oh easy, Sparky. That's enough. We don't need to go any further. Because I always ask people, I do what I call black ops uh, drive-by psychic readings. It takes me about thirty seconds to give someone their mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual state. And when I ask someone if they want a reading, and what I need to be very mindful of is you have boundaries and your your root chakra is very, very strong. Meaning, back off, bro. I'll let you know. If, you, if I want you to come over this line, I'll let you know. And I'm like, okay, I'm hearing you. I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not interested in, in dipping my toe in the deep end of the pool, my friend. I can see that energy. And that's just reading the auric field of you. And that's why I don't want to, you know, I we can, keep going. We can go further if you want to. Yeah? Yeah? yeah you're, I'm, you're, feeling, I'm, you're feeling it now? Yeah, I'm an open book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but um, I'm open to it. That now, 
when I speak on the yin potential, does that make sense to you? I was going to ask you more about that. What what does that mean? The, yeah. Well, it becomes it, it presents itself in in the chills, the shiver, the 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 lightning kind of experience that you have. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Does it make sense to you? Yes. Yeah. So when you get the yang, it's a it's a very heat like state. Like you're starting to experience it now as you kind of like opening up. The heat is coming from within you. It's coming up your spine, and you're starting to feel the expansive feeling through your feet and your hands, and it's hot. It's a different energy, and you'll find that when you're channeling something, even if you can't see it, you want to be mindful that it comes from here. If it's coming from under, you need to start working with what that is, and you will see the property differences. So you're it's always coming from it's as if it's a lightning bolt that comes from the heavens i mean it makes sense right it's like yeah you're getting this source it's coming direct source it's like full like beam, beam me up scotty like that chill you got right now it's real right it's yeah. a real moment that you're having right now so and and the expansive part is like the curiosity you're like i'm ready to go to the next level i'm like okay let's Let's do this. So if you use your Lao Gong points, right, right now as your hands, if you're interested, right, I'm just going to start to slowly microdose you to the energy of that visceral moment with your client. And as you can tell, it's already starting to present itself. And you can ex describe it to the audience, but let me just increase it a little bit more. <laughs> And then if I drop it down and change the properties and the palpability of it, one to five. And then if you take that moment and go, okay, now let me palpate it because your hands are like mitts now. What does that feel like? The, the energy like in between my hands or yeah yeah well expri explain it because this is your experience not mine like magnetism like a field of energy right now if you take it further away and just experience what that is because there's a center point to everything right and as you pull it away there is as you to through your own admission there's this deep center. Now, if you take your hands like this, and because there's a center point, sort of start about shoulder width apart, and now just kind of slowly move them towards each other, very slowly. If you're too slow, you're not slow enough. And then explain what you're experiencing, the potential. Feels like expansiveness. Right. Give yourself the ability to allow. Right. Because you're getting more charge in your in, in your back now than you are in your hands. Yet this is like if you do this, you notice what's what's going on there. What are you experiencing? Honestly, I feel how stiff my hands are. <laughs> That's just energy, my my friend. Yeah. Right. You're like when you go. Hang on. It's like hang on. That's that's thickness. That's like I got a glove on and I'm squeezing. I'm attempting to squeeze my hands and it's like palpable. Right. Now you can do this with anything. Right. So you've got your triangle behind you. Have you infused that with anything? What is that? Uh. Uh, yeah, those are Oregon pyramids. Right. Uh, some of them are ones that I've made. Some of them are not. The big one is one that I made. The smaller ones, I didn't make those. Right, right. Um, but the big one I have and I've, I've connected with uh, energetically. Yeah. Have you got any, um, like, you got a piece of fruit or something or, or object? Uh, uh, um, like, 
like live fruit, like an orange? Yeah, fruit? whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, not currently. Not next to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, just, I guess the only object I would have is these pyramids here. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to mess with the profile of that because it's already changed. Like, like if you take a second, the residual effects. Just move your hands around it and ex explain to the audience what you're experiencing. I guess still more magnetism, more energy right. there. Is that is that strange that that can be brought on so easily like that? Not necessarily, because I, I feel a great deal of that during my meditations, um, in which um, it's, it's almost as if like my body kind of just kind of the awareness goes beyond the, the, the individual ligaments. And usually when I'm usually when I'm, um, I'm meditating, I'm, I'm doing this kind of thing right here and my hands is kind of fused together and, um, the energy field is kind of just swirling around me. Um, so usually when I come out of meditation, I'm actually really dizzy because the, the, the torsion field energy is like spinning very rapidly. Um, and I guess that's also a really good indication for me, usually that I got into a really deep state and I got to connect with, um, that deeper level of, uh, energy and self. Cause I'm, I'm usually just like really disoriented. I need to like sit down for five minutes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Was that strange that you've seen, you're feeling, experiencing this with your eyes open? Um, I wouldn't say strange, but definitely different because I, I don't usually have my eyes open. So, uh, definitely, um, different for sure. It's happening now, my dear friend. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. I would, you know, I'd love to alter the construct of those pyramids, but they're yours. So I'm not going to do that. But the, the, this is all sort of like, it's, it's kind of like now you're a little bit more in tune. Say for example, each one of those has a center, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're just sitting here and looking at that, if you turn to that and you put your hand up as a tuning fork, you will actually experience the different gradients of energy from the pyramid from the top all the way down to the bottom. Each one of them has a different center point. I don't know whether you've ever experienced that or thought to to experience that yourself. Yeah, I've I've uh, done that before. Um, I usually feel it the most when I come out of my meditations. Sorry, excuse me. I don't know how this is happening. My apologies. No, no worries. Uh, I, yeah, I usually experience it the most when I come out of my meditations. I can feel like the different resonance fields of uh, each layer of the pyramid. And I guess that's how I know when I need to make them better, because usually the ones that have the biggest fields usually have the most material in them. Um, so I, 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 I have uh, different pyramids around the house. And um, I guess the one that the most the, the one that's the most powerful is the one that's in my, my bedroom that I sleep next to. Um, but I I've definitely have uh, connected with those before and, and felt the different fields in there. So I, well, you I'm, were, go ahead. I know I'm just saying I, I was gonna say I'm someone who loves uh, pyramids. I really love um, learning about them and uh, the way that they can um, alter energy around you and stuff like that. And I love learning about Oregon pyramids and the uh, the uh, information that the uh, German scientist Wilhelm Wright had brought forward. So I'm always I'm always just learning about stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might want to might want to slowly step up after this uh, podcast and take your time because there's a, a lot more energy in your head. But uh, that will you that's self evident. You'll know that you'll be like, oh, had a spiritual shot of uh, spiritual whiskey or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> That's a good one. I like, I yeah, like yeah, that yeah. Way. yeah. So, this has been a, a real delight, my friend, in, uh, in having a conversation that is about the spiritual consciousness and what comes out of that. Um, I'm very grateful that you've spent your time here today sharing. Thank you for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure and honor, and I uh, hope I uh, was a 
a good guest for the audience and I've said something that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I'm going to put all your social media under this podcast. What is it that you um, do you offer anyone? You have your podcast. Do you offer anyone insight into their own journey or is it just more just this Gnostic path of the podcast and sharing or you have like a place where people could come and find you, go into session with you. Um, tell us a little bit more. Yeah, I guess I am currently following that that Gnostic path of um, just kind of allowing myself to continue to grow and learn myself. But also, um, I guess I am waiting to see what I should be doing for people because right now I just have my podcast. And that's just kind of been my way to cultivate um, relationships and give back to people and let people come on to the show and share their experiences and journeys. But um, I guess I've been waiting for some type of sign or signal that, you know, maybe I should be doing this. I guess I've been waiting for perhaps demand for something from me um, and um, not uh, not. Um, like people demanding something from me, but like they're asking me to do something for them. That's usually how I, I guess I follow the intuitive path for me. Like um, if someone, you know, wanted me to do readings for them, perhaps I'll open up to do stuff like that. But it's, I don't currently offer any services or anything like that. Um, I guess I've just been kind of waiting to see what people will actually need from me, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And as a lot of new age spiritual people would say, spirit will speak to me. <laughs> right. Right, right. Spirit yeah. will speak to me. In closing, um, I want to ask you one last question. What's your definition of consciousness? All that is. That's the first thing that came to me is all that is. And I don't think I can come up with a definition better than all that is. Amen to that, brother. Truly. Um, never heard the same response and I've had hundreds of guests and I love it. It's always a different answer, a different realization. So in closing, I would like to thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. I want to thank the universe for bringing you into my life. I want to thank the audience for sharing their time with us today. And I am your humble servant and Sifu, Taoist Master Sun Ching. And I'll see you on the next one, guys.